Hi, it's Lee Keckner, and I'm with Dr. Ashley Winter. Hello, doctor. Hi, good morning. How in the heck are you today? I'm doing great. How, how in the heck are you? I am doing really great. My um, man is visiting, and we are having some sexual activity. And um, I'm so excited what we're talking about. And, and Dr. Ashley Winter and I get to get together um, because we are both working with the Odella um, First Digital. I actually wrote this down because I want to be so official. Odella, the first digital women's health clinic focused on improving your well-being as well as your sex life. I love yeah. that. Yes, I love it too. I love it too. You know, I'm coming out or I just actually signed papers, thank you very much, on my divorce. Yeah. And um, since that kind of unfolding of the divorce and the end of my marriage, I have opened up literally, literally, what? I have opened up my mind and heart um, about all things with sexual wellness because what I found is I lived a long time kind of in a rut, pleasing him, he fell asleep, and then I just like, oh, I guess I'll watch a TV show. And um, now I'm exploring everything other than that. So I'm so happy to be talking to you and talking about the G spot today, which you told me you're kind of an expert in, am I right? This is a topic very near and dear to my heart because it's something that's talked about a lot and yet shrouded in lots of mystery and a lot of people make claims about it and there's actually really scientific things we know about the g-spot um wait wait so i want to hear just... what claims you what claims people make that makes me laugh you're like and people I make a lot of claims about it like why what does that mean well i mean you know people say that they can find it people say it doesn't exist people say it d does exist people like you know who think the the massive number of women who think that the g-spot is the primary way that they're supposed to achieve an orgasm g-spot stimulation um but i mean tell me like you know uh, coming from your standpoint right not as a quiz but just as a baseline like what would you say that most women and men think about the g-spot like what do they think it is yeah i think well, I'm going to say what I think it is, is yeah. not an expert in the G-spot and exploring my body and, and all of that in a new way. I think it is inside for a woman and kind of up front. Yeah, that's a great... In, is that right? <laughs> that, yes, that is that is correct. So, um, yeah, yeah, you've got, <laughs> you've got the, the you. location. Right. And now the question is what... Okay, so that's an area that when stimulated, I, you know, would make an orgasm, but do you know like what is is in it? What it is made out of? Nothing, nothing past what I just said. <laughs> like, I want you to school me in every detail of the G-spot. Yeah, yeah, so, so that is, um, very common that that's what everybody, you know, is, is taught. If they know anything about the G-spot, that's what they're taught, right? Um, so, so I'll get kind of technical, but it, it's not, it's not as complicated um, as as it may seem. So, uh, you the asked first... me what's in it. What yeah. is what is in it? So, well, here let me let me go on my my okay. whole thing. So, okay. all the external genitalia, male and female, are have homologs. Okay, this is basically means equivalent orga organs. They're just reshaped differently. So for example, the clitoris and the penis are homologs, meaning that if you looked at them under a microscope, they would look like the same thing, except that the, the urethra on men is stuck to the bottom. <laughs> the bottom of it runs along the bottom of it, but the ere there's erection chambers that are the same. The nerve structure is the same. The nerves that go mm. to both are the same. The blood vessels that go to the, both are the same. It's just kind of like, different sizes. Um, and so when I kind of educate people on a really basic level about orgasm, right, I would say telling, uh, you know, a female to not orgasm with clitoral stimulation would be the same thing as telling a male to not orgasm with with penile stimulation, right? Like, because, right. Like when you watch movies and TV shows and, you know, it's like the guy just is railing the woman really hard and she's like, oh, <laughs> you know, and that's great. 
<laughs> but you're ignoring the female equivalent of the penis in that in those depictions, right? So, so that's one what kind of. What do you mean of, by that? How are you well, ignoring it? I mean, a lot of times you don't stimulate the clitoris with with penovaginal penetration, right? I mean, so if certainly, it's going in and out, it's not necessarily hitting your clitoris, right? I right. say clit clitoris. You say clitoris. Yeah, yeah I don't. I don't know what the correct is. <laughs> you say tomato. I say tomato. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know that clitoris and clitoris. We had tomato tomato to it. Yeah, yeah. All there right. you go. Um, okay. Now that said, the clitoris, right? It is actually like a wishbone shape, and the sides of the clitoris go down around your vagina. So you do actually stimulate some of these internal parts of the clitoris that most people don't realize are there during during sex. Yes, you're. I want to I want to stop on that for a second because I learned that we before I thought the clitoris was the tiny little button up there, right? Yeah. And that is part of it, but it's also the whole here all the way down to the vaginal opening, right? It's like the whole thing. It goes thing. around the sides. Yeah. It's actually like if you were going to, you know, like the area called the sit bones if you do yoga. So like yeah. the the pe the penis and clitoris kind of extend down to the and attach to the undersurface of the pelvic bones. Um, and they go really far back, uh, both of them. So they're both kind of like an iceberg, more so, uh, you know, the, the clitoris because you see less of it, but they're both a lot bigger right. than you than you realize. Um, wow. Yeah. So so there is a but way. You can't like uh -huh. stimulate the side of the clitoris like you can the, the button. I mean, the button it's, is kind of the, the spot. The button's the most sensitive part. Right. So it's the same like the head of the penis um, stimulation of the head of the penis is the most effective way of, of you know, producing climax um, in, right. in, a, okay. in somebody with a penis. Um, and so the same with a clitoris. Um, and, you know, there's like, right, all these all these women out there who are like, oh, I haven't ever had a, like a real orgasm or I fake my orgasms. And they were just expecting to have an orgasm from penetration when, you know, penetration of their vagina does not stimulate the head of their clitoris. Right. So, so, so would you say most women have orgasms from something besides just what do you, what do you call it? Penal, what? Peno vaginal. So yeah. Insertion of like a just penis. Sex. Yeah. Just sex. Just, just penetration, penis in vagina. Most, most women do not orgasm from that. Yes. Um, like that's the majority of people, but right. Like 99% of all the sex you've watched on like TV or movies or porn is right. that right. And she comes. And so we feel like if we don't come from that, that it's, we're, we're lacking something. Um, but I'm going on an aside, the, the whole penis clitoris thing is just to point out this like concept of homologs so that we have equivalent organs. Homola, homola, homola. Homologs. Okay, so I we like both. that word. Yeah. So now I'm, we're moving back a little bit, right? So you have your clitoris up in the front and then you move back a little bit and you have your urethra, right? And the urethra is where you pee out of. And then you go back one further and that's the opening to your vagina that we, we, we've talked about, right? So actually right. the urethra that you pee out of runs along that front part of your, of your vagina, right? Like you were talking about where your G-spot is, is that yeah. front part of your vagina. And around your urethra are these really sensitive nerves and glands. And the glands are called the Skene's glands. And, and this kind of complex of nerves and glands are actually the equivalent to a prostate in men. And oh. yeah, uh, it's a lot smaller, rudimentary, but it's the same. And so when, so uh, uh, this area, periurethral glands, Skene's glands, is the homologue of the prostate. And both of those are, are what we would call the G-spot. So, so if you like, that's you so know, funny. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just asked Alexa before we got on. I was like, Alexa, where, where's the G spot located in a woman? Because I didn't know if there's one inside and outside. Uh huh. And it said, the prostate of a man is equivalent to a woman's G spot. So no so way. Hilarious. Alexa just told me that. Uh huh. That's like yeah. amazing. Right. That's the coolest that thing Alexa has ever so said. So when you just said that, I was like, I just learned that. Ah, that's amazing. I, I, my and face prostate, and Alexa. Where is the prostate? 
just mm. for my own knowledge. So there's the, I like to call the technical term ball sack. Yeah. Um, scrotum. Is that right? That's the scrotum. Yes. Is the okay. ball sack. Where is it in relation to that? So the prostate the surrounds the urethra in men. So the tube that carries the pee out of the bladder. And if you were to stick your hand inside of a man's anus and press forward, you would hit the prostate. So that's how we examine a prostate as a urologist, which I am. Uh, that's how you examine a prostate. But when you hear of men having an orgasm from anal penetration, right? That's because it's stimulating their, their prostate, which is the male G spot. Oh, wow. Yes. Well, how do you access it? Like for a woman, if you want to stimulate it, you go through the rectum. So for a man, you have to go through the rectum and put your finger forward and rub on it. And to hit that same organ in a female, you put the finger or the penis or the what have you dildo in the vagina and you press forward. We have to go in a butthole and they get to go in our vagina. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's how, but those are bit. the equivalent because they don't have a vagina. So, right. so they have the rectum. And that's if you go to the organ that's immediately behind that urethra, right? The tube carrying the pee right. out of the bladder. Then if you go immediately behind that, then you get to a vagina in a woman and you get to, uh, you know, the, the rectum anus in a man. And you, wow. you know, stimulate that area. And that is a way that you can also achieve climax, right? Now, wow. the same, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. I didn't know that. I learned something new today. Yeah, and it's also one of the reasons, like, you know, um, there's this, like, crazy misconception, right, that in, like, men, if you enjoy anal stimulation or quote-unquote pegging, you know, that that it makes you gay. What is pegging? Quote, unquote, pegging. <laughs> yeah, basically. I love what you say. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is pegging? Yeah, I mean, it's basically, you know, let's say you're putting something into the into the anus of a of a man to stimulate him. Um, and like Richard you know, like, Gere and the hamster thing. Oh, oh yeah, that would did really be pegging. That? Yeah, I did. Um, that I that the, hamster what, would go push on that prostate. Probably, yeah, I would probably push on the prostate. <laughs> I, I don't know that. I don't. I don't endorse that. I don't even that. know if that's real. I no, don't I endorse don't that's real. having an, a small rodents like die in your in your rectum. That seems like <laughs> animal cruelty. <laughs> there are better ways. I, like I, just, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, if you took a dildo, for example, right? And so okay. people are like, oh, that makes a guy gay. But it's it's not right. Being gay means you're attracted in, to to other men in a romantic way. It has nothing to do with enjoying anal stimulation. Enjoying anal stimulation right. is an is an anatomic thing because your prostate's right there. And when you stimulate oh. it, you can orgasm from that. And a lot of men, regardless of sexual orientation, really enjoy that. Um, and so, you know, similarly, the G-spot in women is this area on that front wall of the vagina, of these glands these skin's glands that surround your urethra. And a lot of women will not orgasm from, from rubbing that area, but, but many can. Um, and a lot, you know, just haven't necessarily had a partner really focus on that area when it comes to, to sex, right? Like a lot of right. male partners are just like, I'm gonna get it as deep in there <laughs> as possible, you know, or, or not necessarily- but it right. has to curve up and around, right? Sometimes, Can a penis yeah. Get there, and it's not even that far in, right? The area we're talking about is not that far in. I mean, you could get to it with a finger easily. Um, but so a penis the, can't get in there, can it? It can, depending on you know the angulation. Um, you know, kind of if you can like position yourself a certain way. Uh, you oh, know, there yeah. are, are some men with natural curvature of the penis that can potentially right, you know, right. be used to stimulate that area. But also, yeah, using a sex toy or a finger can like really get it. Um, right, now, right. interestingly, right, you hear people talk about like female ejaculate, right? Maybe you've heard that, like women who, who, yeah, like, yeah, like squirting. Yes, yes, like squirting. What? Tell me about squirting. I know we're talking about G-spot, but you brought that up and people have talked about squirting. Tell me what, 
how and why does that happen? Can everyone do it? So not everybody does it, but but actually when you take the like there was a study where they took women who who said, hey, I, I can squirt. Right. And they met and they like collected the fluid that they squirted and they met and they like measured the chemicals in it. It was the same except for sperm. It was the same as uh, very similar to male ejaculate, um, which comes from the prostate. And I thought male ejaculate was sperm. It's only 10% of it is from the testicles and the other like 90% of it is from this complex of other organs, including the prostate. Oh, yeah. wow. That's why when you get a vasectomy, the ejaculate volume doesn't actually go down um, because it's, or it goes down slightly. But, but yeah, I mean, because, you know, when you get a vasectomy, wow. you cut off like the input from the testicles, but not the, all, all the other stuff. Um, all right. So, so yeah. So, so anyway, um, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty cool that actually uh, like chemicals that are found in prostate fluid is found in squirting fluid. Wow. Um, yeah. Well, now squirting sounds like an extra bonus. Like how, why does one woman squirt and one doesn't? That is an amazing question that nobody knows the answer to, honestly. And could a woman who hasn't squirted possibly squirt one day or is yeah. it just you got it or you don't? No, I, I definitely think it could. And I think, you know, it probably would take some like focused practice on trying to stimulate that G spot area, like that, what we call interior vaginal wall or the front wall of the vagina. Um, and, you know, having that stimulated during, during sexual activity and see if that helps you um, orgasm. Wow. But, but definitely not everyone does it. Um, I think in part because those glands that produce all that fluid are just much, much smaller in, in females. Um, so it's probably like just harder for, for women to get to the point of like Yeah, it seems that. like, it seems like a tiny bit, we got the raw end of the deal with <laughs> a man being able to get erection quickly, yeah, ejaculate quickly. And we're like just trying to find our spots and trying to, you know, find all the different ways to get it ready to, you know, to, to orgasm. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I, I, there's definitely you know, advantages and disadvantages. And, and I think women have a lot of unique, you know, aspects to our pleasure. I mean, like the concept of having a lower refractory period, meaning like you can orgasm multiple times in a row, um, you know, is much, much more common in women than, than men. Um, you know, we don't and that's really- that's something that I've learned since yeah. my divorce that I'd never experienced before. And it's, wow, it's pretty magical. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. And some men can do it, but, it, but it's much easier for women to be multi-orgasmic than for men. And, and we don't really understand it super well. Um, so we got, we got our own bonuses, <laughs> you know? And I, and I also really love sexual education because we didn't really ever get it. When they're no. in sixth grade talking about penis, vagina, you're going to start your period, and this is what you should have, and you, this is how you make a baby, that's it. And, and it's so repressed, you know, with religions and parents and secrecy and embarrassment and, and, and past trauma. Like, it's so much, so many things layered on it. And oh, actually, for sure. Actually, it's the most beautiful gift that we're given to share this intimacy and to please ourselves. And it's, it's just incredible to me that it's still, you know, when I used to invite, Odella was doing kind of in-person events, and I would invite these moms that I've known for 20 years, and they're like, oh, we don't, we're not into that. Oh, we, we wouldn't do that. And I was like, please, please yourself? Have an or what? I, I couldn't right. even understand the shame. It was shame. a Catholic school, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, no, I mean, you're so right. And it's crazy when I think uh, back to my sex ed class, 0% about of it was about sex. I mean, we never talked about orgasm. We never, we just talked about reproduction and how to not get pregnant, right? <laughs> like reproduction right. and contraception. And and there was nothing about pleasure. There was not a single thing about it. And, you know- It's some, really wild to It's me. wild, it's wild. I it's mean, it's wild. human nature. Yeah. Um, and I sometimes wonder like if we actually taught people a real sex ed, like about how to have sex, how to have pleasure, what penis, clitoris, how they are similar to each other, how orgasms happen, you know, maybe there would be less unintended pregnancy because people would understand like, oh, I can, you know, rub my girlfriend's clitoris and, um, you know, use a dildo on her and we can do this thing and that thing. And, and these things are also sex, right? And they're also pleasurable and, also, and exciting. 
even besides you know the unwanted pregnancy business or uh, it, it's part of like we're here to be in joy that's why we're on the planet like we're born these beautiful beings and we get layered right and covered and then we become adults and it's like what are we doing you know it's just this kind of flatness where i'm like it's such a celebration to know your body Without a doubt. like even when you were talking about seeing your clients and putting a mirror there and showing them their vagina the first time somebody told me to do that when i took some online thing and they we turned our cameras off and we we're supposed to look at our vaginas i was like oh wow i know and when they showed like a hundred different vaginas i was like mine's kind of cute like i didn't know <laughs> But it's just self-exploration and the freedom to enjoy yourself. That's what I love about this. This is, this is you know, as, as much as, as what's going on in the world right now with, um, you know, the Roe versus Wade being overturned and with people, uh, just all kinds of rights, right, kind of up in the air that is uh, just, just kind of on, like, shocking, you know, it's, it's, I'm so happy that Odella has this online space where we can talk about it, we can get help, we can, you know, find this community and we're creating this community for women globally to have a safe place to go for, for, for virtual doctor visits, for, um, for sex education, right? Because this is glorious. I just am I'm so just honored to be a part of it and to be talking to you and I love how fresh, young and open you are. Um, just really cool. Just and reflecting I, here for a minute. No, for sure. I agree. And another inherent part of the mission that I, I really like um, with Odell is the accessibility, right? So I think, um, like you're saying, it can be all over the world because it's virtual. It can be, you know, for people in communities where they don't feel like they have community resources, uh, you know, to talk about these things. Or if they don't have healthcare providers in their community who will offer them, you know, medical care that they that they need. Um, and oftentimes also, you know, a lot of top um, healthcare providers in the sexual medicine space, you know, can be quite expensive to see. And yeah, it's just making it accessible, accessible, and encouraging fun and encouraging play and exploration. That's one of my favorite things to do on the planet is explore everything. Yes. You know, yeah. and to allow myself now to explore my own body and ways that excite me and it's like this treat I've been given in my 50s. And before, I, I might not have even been speaking about it. It's just allowing ourselves the freedom to be fully ourselves in yeah. every way. Yeah. And that's what this space is providing. I freaking love it. I love it. More too. about the G spot, please. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I mean, that was all the major points, you know, the front part wall of the vagina, uh, the same homologue uh, to the prostate. Uh, that some women who squirt will have, you know, stuff that squirts out that's similar to to prostate secretions. That said, and as a, a an aside, um, some women who squirt it is urine, uh, so it can be. What? Yeah, it can it can be one of both things, um, but usually you can tell by the amount um, and the quality of. Wait, the fluid I that thought comes it was out. like the juices that came from like the woman's kind of prostate area. So it most so so it can be one of the two things, right? So so it can, or it be, can a be urine. <laughs> yes, but Wait that's a second. If you're squirting pee on someone, I, I mean, would advise you to go pee before. But that I yeah. didn't know squirting was urine. It's it, in some could people squirt it if is. it's urine. It's in some people you it is, and you usually can tell. <laughs> like, um, but but yeah, that's actually there's actually a medical word for when you pee when you orgasm. Um, it's called climacteria. Um, like climax and urine. So, um, so is that something that people experience? Like, let's pretend they didn't want to pee. But yeah. Some people, it's like when some people jump after having a kid, they pee. They don't want to do that. Do some people pee when they're orgasming every time and they don't want to? And you can yes. get it like fixed? Or Oh my gosh. I couldn't imagine peeing on people every time I had an orgasm. I guess I, mean, I wouldn't care because I'd be in orgasm and be so happy about it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it all depends, right? So there are ways you can minimize the volume, right? Like like you're saying, pee before you have sex. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's just another manifestation of, like, eroticism. You know, a lot of people's partners will just be like, I don't really care. You know, pee is, like, not dirty. And we'll yeah. put down, like, a pad or something on the bed. 
Um, but then, yeah, some people are really devastated about it. And, you know, then you can talk to your doctor. Um, it also does happen. I love in- the cu- I love the couples that have the freedom or the women to just put a pad under them <laughs> and pee and enjoy it. That's you know, awesome. I know. And I've seen everything. Like as somebody who deals with sexual dysfunctions, I've seen everything, right? I've seen people who their, their relationship falls apart because both people aren't functioning exactly the way they were always told that they were supposed to function. And then I have other people who are like, so exploratory um Mm. you know like i've had guys come in with erectile dysfunction who are like it's destroyed my entire life i've had other guys come into the my office with erectile dysfunction who are like oh yeah i actually give my wife better orgasms now because i've learned how to like use my tongue better (laughs) you know and and i'm just like so impressed by somebody taking adversity and using it to adapt right Um, i I think that's actually why we're here is that we all experience adversity. Will you be a victim of it? Or will you be educated by it and use it as a platform to make a difference with yourself in the world? That's, I love that. Right, right, so they're right. I mean, instead of this guy saying, hey, I have erectile dysfunction, my wife and I can't have sex anymore. He was like, what are other ways to have sex, right? And that was the thing. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. That's a good guy right there. I know. <laughs> Whenever I have those those type of patients, I'm like, high five. Go you. You need to talk to your friends. <laughs> you know? So <laughs> I have another a cl- I yeah. have another G spot business. Is w- is our clitoris a G spot? I mean the clitoris is is a you know, I mean G spot is just a name for that area, right? But inside you. Yeah, yeah. I mean in terms of like an erogenous zone that allows you to lead to climax, then the clitoris is one of those, you know? So I, I don't know. It's what all just like What does G stand button. for? What is like, G Graffenberg, stand for? Like Graffenberg, he was like this researcher um, who first came up with the term, but, but people had like identified that as an erogenous zone that can lead to orgasm before him. I think he just... I don't know. He just marketed himself better or something. <laughs> I, don't, I, I should know, know the history he did of this something better, that our area gets named after him. I want to know what the hell he did. I know. That's I, I always am kind of sad that I entered medicine in a time when like you couldn't name things after yourself anymore. <laughs> but but there are like well, you have to find something new and you can. I know there's there's a procedure called the the winter shunt, and I just pretend it was named after me, even though. It most certainly was not, and it's oh a pretty gosh, horrible. Oh my gosh, Dr. Ashley Winter, I can't believe you created the winter shunt. Yeah, exactly. I just, this, I invented Congratulations. this. Congratulations. <laughs> We're talking to a real trailblazer here. <laughs> no. What is the winter shunt, It's It's pretty, it's pretty horrible. It's, um, if you have something called a priapism, which is an erection that won't go down, uh, if you jam, like, a really large needle through the tip of the penis many times, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, your eye. <laughs> like you basically try try to make the head of the penis like a like a watering can of sorts, then that's a winter shunt. And uh, urology is an interesting it... profession. <laughs> uh, okay, sometimes wait, it works. What? This is a sidebar, and then we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. Yes, but yes. <laughs> I saw a video of a man who couldn't stop having orgasms. Oh. I shouldn't laugh because he would walk and just like. Ugh. yeah all day long have you yeah. met anyone like that yeah i have actually it's a really devastating condition um um oh my god because the, the you can't live it's like you can't you can't like live your life regular because you're constantly orgasm it's like you're having a lunch conversation at work you're like Ugh. yeah yeah so it's constantly. a condition it's a condition called pgad persistent genital arousal disorder um it actually wow. happens more frequently in women um than men um but women are just constantly orgasming so not necessarily that they're constantly orgasming they, there are some that may feel that way but usually it's that this you have this persistent like heightened level of heightened arousal where you feel like you're on the cusp of orgasm all the time uh even though you don't want to that be, would be tiring right, right? it's horrible no it's horrible i mean there are people who have been like suicidal over this because they Aww. it's not like they want it it's like the nerve that goes to the clitoris is going crazy it's overactive it's overactive right so the way you can have like wow. a nerve to you know your sciatica or you can have some other nerve that's doing something it's not supposed to be doing it so yeah you know the problem is there's so much stigma so if you have right your sciatic nerve is like driving you crazy you can talk to people about the pain going on your leg right but if you have this 
crazy feeling in your clitoris or your penis people think you're like a sex addict or something you know and these people don't want it right it's very it's very debilitating so um it's, what like, am I it's like too much of a good thing, right? It's like, yeah, you think, wow, I'd love to. But no, actually, it'd be horrible because it's it's supposed to be like this thing when you're aroused and excited and intimate, not like something that's pulling at you constantly. Right. hundred percent. Exactly. I mean, we yeah. want we want these feelings, but we want to have control over them. Right. So. So, yeah, it's so, a fascinating condition and it is a real thing. Um, and it's just, yeah. So kind of in our wrap up. Um, yeah. about the g-spot well first of all how can people get a hold of you or how can they follow you oh sure well my my twitter is uh at ashley g winter um and of course you and i are going to keep making content uh, with the odella platform so uh, people can also you know, ashley follow is with an e right a-s-h-l-e-y g as in grape g-spot. and then winter like the <laughs> yes like you said and we no, this is what g led to this g-spot yeah um, and then winter. That's like hilarious. Season. You always have to say Ashley G is in G spot winter. I know. I have to start saying that. I really That's do. hilarious. I know. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm going to help brand that with you. Thank you. Um, and my name is Lee <laughs> Keckner. And if you, um, I like to work with people's minds to free them, you know, the thoughts and the limiting beliefs and the old trauma and all that, um, so they can really fully experience the joy of the vagina and and of life. It, in general, you can find me on um, Instagram, Lee, L-E-I-G-H, Keckner, K-O-E-C-H-N-E-R. And uh, we'll have the information on these these little videos. And uh, we are here for you in the Odella platform. And, um, you know, we're going to turn this whole, uh, I'll have an orgasm or I found my G-spot. It was awesome. I like toast. I'm going to walk my dog. Like, I want this to become something that's so regular, like a nose, an elbow, a foot, a vagina, right? It's just a part of a body, but it's something really special and spectacular. So yeah. I'm so happy to be celebrating this with you on the platform with Odella and um, the good that it's going to bring. It's exciting stuff. Same, same. Oh, and the last little tidbit, what's the oh, yeah. giveaway for the, the, the people? What's the takeaway for these wonderful men and women regarding the G-spot? Explore it? Uh, yeah, explore it. I mean, you know, if explore it. You don't, you, I, I think also just to say really importantly that you don't have to have any ex- expectations for your G-spot. Like, if you can orgasm from G-spot simulation, that's amazing. If you can't, that's fine. That's normal, right? And, um... Yeah, I think. And I, I think- also like this n- new freedom that, that just reminded me of that, that I have, that you don't have to have an orgasm every time. He doesn't have to have an orgasm. Just, totally. the, just the event of touching each other's bodies mm-hmm. and looking at each other in the eyes and feeling, you know, and playing around, you know, whatever it is, you don't have to do it for an, an, an outcome. 100%. You can just enjoy it. Yeah, I, know. I love and- that. That's just freedom. Sometimes, like my husband is a very physically affectionate person, which is one of the things I absolutely love about him, both, you know, in a sensual way and also just in a, you know, like cuddling way. And sometimes that's his he'll... love language. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, and it's amazing because I've dated, you know, before him, I was in relationships with lots of people who were not physically affectionate unless it was like, OK, time to have an orgasm. Like this is time for us to yeah. use the sex thing, reach orgasm, and then we're going to stop touching each other, you know. But I right, find right, myself right. even, you know, times he comes up to me and maybe he starts caressing me or he's like hugging me. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm not in the mood for sex now. <laughs> and he's like, I was just trying to like be loving to you. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? And I'm like, oh, right. Because <laughs> for you, you equate it with foreplay shit. I'm not in the mood. I've got a headache. I've right. got a lot of work to do. Please don't touch my arm. It's funny because I'm with my boyfriend's is touch and affirmation and mine is touch and affirmation. So we're constantly scratching each other's arms or hair or, yeah. you know, it, and it's so wonderful to have someone with so the wonderful. same one because then yeah. you're just feeding each other without even meaning to. It's really pretty cool. It's amazing. Okay. So, um, I'm thinking I would like to talk about, I am 56, and we talked a tiny bit about this earlier. Next time I want to dive more into, if you're open to it, hormones. Without a doubt. I would love to talk about that. Yeah, I would really like to get educated because you were talking about you would always do vaginal estrogen, yes. right, whenever you need it and never stop. And I'm yes. I'm really excited to hear more about that. Yes. I, we're going to talk about everything. I'm so excited. Well, Dr. Winter, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> Yeah, same. Talking to you because it leads to greater pleasure. 
right? When we understand yes. our bodies and we can. When we understand, we destigmatize, yeah. educate, normalize all these things. Yes. yes, I love those words. Yes, perfect. All right, we can do that together on the Odella platform, and you and I in this in these chats. I really love them, and I look forward when we start bringing in um, some other experts in 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 different ways. If anyone could be more of an expert than you and me, we're we're fantastic. (laughs) But but (laughs) but we're gonna get many other fantastic people in as well. One hundred percent. Yeah. Build out this community. All right, darling. Thank you so much for chatting, and I look forward to next time when we talk about hormones. Mm